Hello, and welcome to the HIVRNATestGuide.com YouTube channel, your online partner for quick, affordable, and 100% confidential HIV testing. Whether you're looking for quick, confidential results or simply want to stay informed about the latest in HIV research, you're in the right place. For more information, visit HIVRNATestGuide.com. Check the link in the description below or visit the bio section of our channel. You can access our more than 4,500 HIV testing labs across the United States, just a click away. So, without further delay, let's start today's video. You know, for decades, an HIV diagnosis was basically a death sentence. Now, thanks to some absolutely incredible science, it's a manageable condition. But here's the thing. This progress has created a really strange paradox, a question that scientists, especially those at Western University, are racing to answer, right? This is the central mystery we're diving into today. If the virus is so-called undetectable in someone's system, why do they have to keep taking medication every single day? Why can't they just stop? Well, to get to the bottom of that, we have to look at what the treatment is actually doing and, more importantly, what it's not doing. So this really lays it all out. When someone is on antiretroviral therapy, or ART, everything looks great. The virus is suppressed, the person is healthy, but the second they stop that treatment, the virus comes roaring back. That tells us something absolutely crucial. ART is an amazing tool for managing the virus, but it isn't a cure. The virus isn't gone, it's just hiding. And that, right there, leads us to the real villain of our story. To even dream of a cure, scientists first had to figure out where this virus was building its secret fortress inside the human body. And this is it. It's called the latent HIV reservoir. Now, the best way to think about this is like a team of sleeper agent cells. They're infected with HIV for sure, but they're totally dormant, totally inactive. They're not churning out new copies of the virus, so our immune system just doesn't see them as a threat. And the ART drugs? Well, those drugs are designed to attack a virus that's actively replicating, so they fly right past these sleeping cells. It is literally the perfect hiding spot. And that's not me being dramatic. That's the consensus. Researchers at places like Western University, who are on the absolute front lines of this fight, have all said the same thing. This reservoir, this is the number one obstacle. If we can figure this out, we can finally crack the code to a cure. Okay, so how in the world do fight an enemy you can't even see? Well, you do what any good detective would do. You investigate, you look for clues. So let's dig into what researchers have been uncovering about how this hidden fortress actually works. Now here's what's so wild. The virus doesn't just hide in the same way everywhere in the body. It's way smarter than that. Research from Dr. Stephen Barr's team shows that in the brain, for example, the virus actually tucks itself into parts of our DNA that are hardly ever used. It's like hiding a secret message in a book that's in the dustiest, most forgotten corner of a massive library. It makes it incredibly, incredibly difficult to find and flush out. So the virus has its hiding spots, but clue number two tells us it also has a bodyguard. Researchers have zeroed in on this one specific HIV protein called NEF, and it seems to act like a personal protector for these sleeping virus cells. And you can really see its impact right here. Work from doctors Diakos and Mumbi in 2025 showed that when this NEF protein is really active, that hidden reservoir of HIV just sticks around. It decays so much more slowly. So this protein isn't passive, it's actively helping the virus survive for the long haul, basically fighting off any attempt our body makes to clear it out. All right, so we're starting to get a picture, right? We know where it hides and we know how it protects itself. But how does it get into that sleeping, dormant state to begin with? Well, the final clue points to a protein that our own bodies make, called APOBC3. A study in 2023 found that this protein is basically the key that the virus uses. It helps the virus unlock our DNA and slip inside to become latent. And this is a huge deal, because if scientists can figure out how to block that key, or maybe make a fake key that gums up the lock, they might be able to stop this whole reservoir from ever even forming. Okay, so with all these clues piling up, the scientific community isn't just sitting back and taking notes anymore. No, they're launching a counteroffensive. And if the virus's main trick is hiding by being asleep, well, the main strategy is brilliantly simple. Wake it up. This is the leading strategy right now. It's called shock and kill. Dr. Eric Art's team at Western has actually developed a special particle that goes in and gives those dormant cells a shock, basically forcing them to wake up and start making virus again. 
And once they're active, they're not hidden anymore. They're visible. That's when phase two, the kill phase, kicks in and the body's own immune system, along with ART drugs, can finally see them and destroy them for good. And I really wanna emphasize what a monumental shift this is. We are moving from a strategy of just suppressing an active virus to one where we're actively hunting down the dormant virus. We're going from managing an infection to trying to completely eradicate it. From a lifelong treatment to a potential, honest to goodness cure. And shock and kill isn't the only play in the book, not by a long shot. Scientists are developing a whole bunch of strategies. Some methods are just focused on yanking the virus out of its hiding spots. But another one, called ACTV, is this really clever two-for-one punch. It wakes up the virus, making it visible, while also boosting the exact immune cells that are best equipped to fight it. It's just a brilliant approach. As you can see, the attack is coming from all sides. You've got Dr. Art's team developing therapies to shock the virus awake, while Dr. Barr is mapping all of its specific hiding spots, and Drs. Dykekos and Mumby are figuring out how to disable its protein bodyguards. It's exactly this kind of multi-pronged assault that's needed to finally break down that fortress. So, where does this all lead? How does this all come together in the end game? Well, all these separate clues and all these different strategies are finally starting to paint a much clearer picture of what the path to a cure actually looks like. And I think the biggest takeaway from all of this is that there probably isn't gonna be a single magic silver bullet. The cure is much more likely to be a cocktail of strategies. You know, maybe one drug to block that Nef protein, another to shock the virus awake, and then a third to boost the immune system for the final blow. Each one of these discoveries is another critical piece falling into place in a very, very complex puzzle. And as all these puzzle pieces start to fit together, we're left with this one really powerful thought. After decades of fear and loss and incredible resilience, the work being done by these scientists means we can finally ask this question, not as some distant, impossible dream, but as a potential, tangible reality. What would that world actually look like? The answer to that question is why this research matters so, so much. 